It's Boss Up and List Day. Boss Up and List Day. It's Wednesday. Wednesday show. We're here to come to you live for Boss Up and List Day. Skibbity boppity boo bop. Skibbity boppity boo boop boo boop You like that? No, are you, are you done? I are you wrote done? that song for you. You guys, I sit here and I spend hours <laughs> writing. You Special really, songs just for you. Hours. You really need to find hours. And you don't appreciate my craft. Uh, you don't appreciate my creativity. You really look like you. Um, you certainly don't appreciate my scat. I certainly don't. <laughs> so rude. I certainly don't. You need a new hobby. <laughs> no. Uh, see? Everybody likes my song. Sure. Believable Blessing says. They're lying. That was great. No. <laughs> No. All right. Hey, everybody. What's happening? It's Wednesday. It's Boss Up and List Day. Um, this is your first time here. I am Katie. This is Vicky, a.k.a. Victoria, a.k.a. non-appreciator of my craft, a.k.a. my fiance. What do you have to say for yourself? Not a lot. Not a lot. <laughs> I've run out of things to talk about. You're over it? <laughs> well... Well, this remember what a couple of years ago when Katie started the show by herself? Mm hmm Yeah. What, you want to go back to that? You might, other than the Hall shows, you might be stuck with Katie. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> He's so rude. He's so <laughs> hashtag rude. Uh, anyway, guys, welcome. It is Wednesday. Uh, we It's like we haven't been here forever because we took Sunday off. I know um, some, people, we did. some people were wondering what happened to our Sunday show. It was Mother's Day. Um, we, they just lifted, partially lifted our stay at home order here. And we did decide to go and spend, um, spend Wednesday, Sunday, sorry, Sunday. We're saving that for Sunday. Okay. Uh, Rude. well, that's her favorite show. Anyway, um, we, uh, we decided to cancel the show and spend mother's day with some local friends who we traditionally spend mother's day with. Mm hmm um because your daughter doesn't live here and so and they have a small child and so it's kind of like they share mother's day with you and since i came along they do. With me too. and now they share it with you yeah my daughter lives three thousand miles away so we haven't spent we actually did spend mother's day together last year because i happened to be in rhode island uh for mother's day but that was a, an anomaly mm -hmm. um so the past five or six years i've pretty much spent them spent mother's day with our friends mm -hmm. and their cute little kid so uh, we had a nice day. It actually felt like a a normal day. We just uh, hung out at their house and we did a little potluck and there was a, you know, our, our little foursome, six actually, because we had another couple come and all six of us have been working from home and being very, very careful and very safe for the past two months. So yeah. uh, it was nice. It was a nice normal day. It was a, it was a good break from uh, the monotony that it's been, been lately. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I got to chase a lizard. So that was fun. Yeah. I did not catch one. Yep. We got to, we did a couple things. We had a nice, it was a nice day. Anyway, mimosas were had, let's yes. just say. There were a lot of mimosas that were um, imbibed. I mean, you had like two, so you had to take a like nap when we got home. bottles. <laughs> no, you did not. No, no I did. I did have at least, a lightweight. I had a full bottle of champagne. I did. Uh, I mean, I don't think so, but um, anyway, so it is Wednesday. It's Boss Up and List Day for the uninitiated. Why don't you go ahead and give us the quick breakdown of well what first Boston i just want to say is. we've got greg dupage picker in the what? house he hasn't been in one of our live shows in several weeks now we thought something may have happened to him i thought we could... picker. greg we miss you yeah. i'm not even sure if he's still in vegas he moved here literally three days before the freaking state got locked yeah. down and we have not been able to see him since right after he moved here uh that same week and uh i think he was thinking about going back to where is it? not ohio where Swiss state are you from? Idaho? Michigan? Michigan. I, I, I lost completely what state you're supposed to be in. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just had a blank. But I think he might have gone back because he was locked up in yeah. a rental back in Illinois now. See? I'm sad. I'm yeah, sad, he's Greg. I'm really sad. I'm so sorry. We had all these plans of all this hanging out, and he moved here, and the poop hit the fan. I mean, seriously, Greg, why did you just show up just as you a pandemic? You brought the Rona with you, just, apparently. Well, I would just say the timing, just as a pandemic. I mean, what are the odds? It's just ridiculous. What's the lifetime experience? I'm really sad. It's just a bummer. 
Um, I hope that means you'll come back when the world gets normal again, if it ever gets normal again. Who knows? Um, anyway, so Boss Up and Boss Up and List Day. Boss Up and List Day is our all-day virtual listing party that we host in the Boss Facebook group. The link to which is down below. If you're not in the Boss Facebook group, you should be. It's a pretty cool. You slip in. You slip in. Uh, it's a pretty cool group, and it was actually founded by Teresa Cox, who was our guest for today, who will be on in a few mm -hmm. minutes. And Teresa runs the group, and we help run it with her, with uh, you know, a couple of other really great admins. Uh, basically, Wednesday is the day that we put a post up in the group, and it's our, our day that we talk about our goals for the day or for the week, and it's an, um, why we called each other accountable. Sometimes it's listing goals, sometimes yeah. it's business, sometimes it's personal. We kind of gather around the virtual water cooler with our stranger friends and our virtual coworkers, mm -hmm. and we talk about our goals for the day. Yep. 11 o'clock Pacific time, we take a break, and that's when we have our show, and we chat with our coworkers. Yep. And um, usually this is our businessy show. Lately, yeah. we've been doing a lot of the masked seller, which has been a lot of fun. We it's will been be back to fun. that. We'll be back to that next week. But because there was a announcement that came out this week, and a, a lot of emails that have come out in the last week or so, um, that there is a very large portion of uh, eBay sellers that are going to be put into the managed payments program in July. Like it or not, here it is. Uh, it's been coming for a couple of years, and this is the major phase push out where they're bringing almost everybody in in July. Everybody will be in by the end of the year for sure, but almost everybody, the big bulk of people are being pushed in in July. Uh, they're, they're holding out a few people. I think they're holding out for people that do a lot of, there are certain categories that it hasn't yeah. um, rolled over into yet, people that use it dealing money and coins and things like that, and also um, people that deal specifically with um, charity because charity is not 100% on board yet. Yeah. So I'm not sure exactly who's not on board, but that's that's a much smaller percentage that's going to be rolled yeah. out in the final phase. But right now, this is the bulk. Most of us, it is what it is, and here's where we go. So I, I do want to preface before we get into the show, um, Teresa's going to come on, and she's going to she's actually been in managed payments for like a year and a half or almost two years now. Um, and, and we're going to go over questions. But I do want to preface this by... Let's keep the uh, the wailing and um, gnashing of teeth to a minimum in the chat. Here's the deal: it is what it is. This is happening. You either adapt or get it, get off the pl platform. I mean, that's really the that's, yeah, that's, and that's the reality. It's their playground. Yeah. You've got to learn how to play by the rules, and we're going to try to bring you the best information about it to try to alleviate some of the questions, the concerns, and the misinformation that's mm -hmm. out there because there's a lot of that too. Um, and Teresa has been in it from day one. Uh, she actually uh, runs a smaller Facebook group as well that's just for managed payments and just for people that are in managed payments mm -hmm. already. And she's been in it since beta. And there were some bumps along the way. And that's to be, yeah. that's to be uh, anticipated when you're rolling out a brand new program. Uh, and I think that they've worked out the majority of them. A lot of the issues that some people had in the very beginning have already been eliminated yeah. so I'm, I'm kind of yes we're all a little bit disappointed nobody likes change except maybe yeah. Teresa she's weird she likes change <laughs> but nobody in general likes change I know that I don't like change I was not someone that wanted to be an early adapter I wanted to kind of wait back and see and be like all right how's this gonna work I mean it made sense for us because of the because we have we both depend on a very high percentage of international sales and it wasn't that there were issues in the beginning it was just the way that they were uh, slowly building the program at first, especially there were um, limitations to international sales. And so we did wait for good reason. Um, but basically bottom line is don't get me wrong. We've done plenty of complaining about this because mm -hmm. like Vicki says, you know, most people don't particularly like change, but just think of this almost I as like, I really don't like change. I'm a whiner. Uh, let's face it. A yeah. lot of the things that eBay adapts over the years, I've had no problem jumping in with. I'm generally, this is the only program I have not been a beta tester for out of everything that they've done in the last several years. I've been early adapter on everything. Yeah. When they said do free shipping, I did free shipping. When they said do free 60 day returns, I did free 60 day returns. When they said do this, do that, I've always done what whatever is required. I was in promoted listings from day one in beta and I still love and use promoted listings. So I'm, I'm always somebody that's looking to elevate my business. For me, this didn't make sense early on yeah. because of the international aspect. But now that that's going to be fixed and, and pretty much is going to be working going forward, then I'm fine. I'm, I'm, yep. I'm ready to, to roll with the punches too. Yeah. So let's just, uh, let's, I'm going to bring Teresa out and, um, and let's just get into and it. And I do want to say real quickly, hi, Teresa's mom. I saw it in the chat that she <laughs> saw. 
Uh, Teresa's mom has been not been feeling well lately and she's been in and out of the hospital and we miss her. And so we're sending her a virtual mm-hmm. hug. Katie and I love her. She makes the Please. best tacos oh, ever. The best gringo tacos ever. They're delicious. And we miss her, and we hope that we get to say hi yeah. soon. So and, I'm glad she's listening. And, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, mom, I'm gonna let out one of the secrets to your magical tacos, other than the deep fried shells, uh, deep fried tortillas. Uh, that would be the Hormel chili. Hormel chili. Who would have thought? Makes them wah, delicious. All right, we're gonna bring Teresa out. Here we go, Teresa. What is happening? Wait, you're on mute. Did you mute yourself? Okay, I just I did because. I was trying to figure out the reverb from the TV in the living room, but I think we're okay. Can't guarantee my mom can hear the TV in the living room, but I can hear you guys. (laughs) And by the way, the secret to the tacos is Hormel chili with beans because when my mom was a Girl Scout leader, they needed something to stretch the meat. Yeah. And it turned out to be like her thing. So best tacos. They're so good. They really are really, really good. Makes a difference. Um, so Teresa, the bossiest of all the bosses, I feel like I'm wondering, like, we've got a lot of people watching live right now. Um, and I don't know if it's because, uh, they, they want to get into this managed payments thing, or if it's because you are basically, I think they're Teresa fans, one of our most popular guests. (laughs) And I'm going to go ahead and toot Teresa's horn a little bit. The number one most viewed video in the history of this channel, most Mm -hmm. viewed and top revenue earning is a video with Teresa when we went out and did um, when it was, retail just, arbitrage. When it was just Katie's channel. But you were on the video too. I was. I was. Teresa was in town. We went and did retail arbitrage at like Ross and Marshalls and stuff. And that video, hands down, I think it's like up to like 40,000 views. Hands down, finger up. Hands down, <laughs> ET finger up. Anyway, just had to say yeah, that. Yeah, it's. Um, I have no idea why, but you know, there you go. <laughs> People like the retail arbitrage yeah. videos and they definitely get a lot more views than any of the regular reseller thrifting videos do. Mm-hmm. The next People time like I'm that in town, money. The next time I'm in town and we do some RA, we'll do another video to update it. Absolutely. Yeah, for oh, sure. Well. Oh, Danny says that's the first one that uh, she ever watched, Lady Luck Jump. That's pretty cool. My, my mom is yelling in there, Teresa, you're on TV. <laughs> 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 She's so cute. <laughs> She's so cute. Uh, well, you'll have to you'll have to play her our shout out in case she didn't actually hear it. Um, but anyway, oh, and real quick before we get into this, guys, I did want to give a shout out, Teresa. You actually saw it. Why don't you give the shout out? Who did you see on national oh. television today? Yeah, Dana Crawford. I was my my mom's phone rang, so I go in there because she's getting all these doctor calls. And she watches Good Morning America record it. So it was on a playback. And I just immediately hit the mute button. And she's talking on the phone. And the next thing I know, I'm like, hey, like she's still on the phone with this person. I'm like, hey, I know that woman. <laughs> and it was Dana Crawford on Good Morning America today talking about reselling on eBay, which is such a cool thing. It's also her birthday today. So Dana does the show sometimes. Dana yeah. works for Worth Point, but she's also a uh, seller an and educator. has been a seller and an eBay educator for much longer than she's worked for uh, for Worth Point. She's one of the OG sellers on eBay. And uh, Nana Dana, as we call her, because she's Nana to two uh, adorable little babies right now. Yeah. Uh, it's also her birthday, and she was on Good Morning America. Like, what? that's a pretty good day. I think it's pretty cool. Present. So yeah. I would assume, I mean, it was today's show. I would think maybe there's a video out there somewhere. You guys can check it out. But Dana Crawford, she is, she's one of our peeps. Yeah, so we love Dana. Congrats to Dana. Super exciting. And happy birthday. Yeah, happy birthday to Dana. Yeah, so, uh, so Teresa, why don't you tell us real quick, give us, like, a breakdown. Like, what is managed payments? And, and, uh, and what's your experience with it? Okay, so so like you guys said, I've been in managed payments since September of 2018. So it's a year and a half. And um, I'm an early adopter. I like to test things out and all that good stuff. And there was a lot of um, misinformation. Um, there still is a lot of misinformation about out there about what it will and won't do. And I will tell you that in my 23 or so years selling on eBay, I still think it is the best rolled out program ever. So, and I say that because everyone's like, how could that be? It didn't have PayPal. Those were planned milestones. They knew they were gonna kick it off with without PayPal. They knew that it was gonna take a while to get international. They knew, and every milestone 
that they like they knew that they were going to put PayPal back let's say in summer of last year and they did it earlier like they met every mm -hmm. milestone and so kudos to them because it is a very complicated process and mm -hmm. so a couple of things just to say right off the bat you don't have to worry about ADN I wish eBay hadn't done the it video that said they were part partnering with ADN because ADN is has an agreement with eBay not with us it's eBay and ADN is just the company that provides the service to take our credit card information and process it. Mm -hmm. And so they do it for, you know, if you shop on Target or Walmart, any of those sites, they have Etsy. some. Yeah. Etsy. The Etsy payment processing system is the exact same processing system. If you sell on Etsy and you know how it works on Etsy, then you are going to be fine with this transition. Yeah. And I will say real quick, to, not to keep you from talking, Teresa, but I will say real quick that Etsy is hands down of all the platforms, including eBay, Etsy's payment processing, how they handle payments is my favorite. Mm -hmm. So that, so honestly, knowing that it's the same company partnering with eBay as the one that partners with Etsy, it actually makes me feel better. So I'm glad that they have that name out there. Well, and let me just tell you, what did I, what was I messaging you about yesterday, Katie? How do I get paid from Etsy? Where do I find my information? Like it just didn't make sense to me. So, but the, the, the main thing to take away from that is we don't need to worry about ADN. Like it's just eBay has that partner. Our partnership sure. is with eBay. And right. so um, just a real quick, couple of real quick things. If somebody pays with PayPal, we still get paid by eBay. If somebody pays with Apple Pay, like we don't, we will not know how somebody paid. We will just get our deposits and Why? they will just get processed. Yeah. So it's it doesn't matter. If you had PayPal and you were getting, a, you're getting your income from PayPal, you had no idea if the person was using Discover, their uh, debit card, MasterCard, Visa. You have no idea what yeah. someone is using and, and nor should you. It's none of your business. It's a blind processing company. And again, it's the same way with Etsy and I've never had issues with, with Etsy around that. So and i haven't had any issues 18 months no issues with ebay payouts nothing now i i in my i do have a facebook group and i am opening it up to more with people that are um in the beginning it was just for the people in the beta group but now i'm opening it up to anybody that wants to learn more about it just because it's here uh, but there were a few people in the beginning that had issues with their bank and having talked with the people in um, the managed payments, like there was, you know, people get really upset. Like I haven't had a payment in 10 days. I get it. Like that's 10 days is a long time. And every time it was an issue with their routing number or their account number, something that, that eBay didn't have control over, but eBay really, really worked with sellers to try to figure out what the problem was. I think that they now know what the issues are and they can just say, Oh, you have to do this or you need to do this or whatever it is. Yeah. Cause mm -hmm. they haven't heard of anybody in quite a while that has had issues getting their bank account set up. It's just, I mean, it's like every other platform, you put your information in and it's done. Right. right. And I've seen people be concerned about the whole like, oh, they're asking for my social security number and all this. Same thing with Etsy, like, yes. same thing with most Etsy, platforms where they take Macari, your money. PayPal, when you first set up PayPal, you had to give all this information back then too. This you is need not a, a new, new thing. You have to give so, your banking information. They have to have your te your uh, your social security number or your business i tax uh, your business ID EID number because that's how they legally, as a banking institution, have to keep track of the income coming in and out. Because if you're somebody, I, I get it. For most of us, it's small beans. We're not talking tens of thousands of dollars every day. But for people that do do that type of information or that type of um, you know amount of money, there are legal things that the banking institutions have to report based on that type yeah. of money flow and cash flow so and when you hit a certain threshold you, you get a 1099 and you know i don't know how, how ebay is doing out they have a threshold or same be thing what is paypal two uh 200 transactions and twenty thousand dollars okay so same All as right. paypal so and the good um, thing is you'll be able to get your uh, 1099 right on your uh seller hub is what i what i'm hearing yeah. so you know next year we may not hit that threshold depending on how, what your income is. Right. But you'll have 1099 there. So here's the thing. The first year I had eBay, I started in September. I didn't get a 1099 because from September through December where I had PayPal, where I had eBay, I did not do 200 transactions and $20,000. So that first year I did not get that 1099 from eBay. So if you join in, in July, you may not, and you normally get that 1099, you may not because you're only going to get a half a year of sales yeah because, right. and you need you won't meet it for paypal because that's only six months and you won't meet it for ebay because that's only six months 
So, you know, that could quick, be a way. Uh, there's a quick question that I can answer that um, waste not, want not. Will tax info be combined with that of Etsy since it's the same processor? No. Those are they're, your your business is with eBay, not with the payment processing company. Mm -hmm. Just like Etsy gives you a 1099, eBay will give you a 1099 or not, depending on where your thresholds yeah. are. They're completely different companies. And, and, and so let's, let's answer a, a couple. There's a couple of questions I do want to answer because I think people are very concerned about the money side of it. And, and you know, because we, we are very used to being able to you sell something and the money is bam right there in PayPal. So people don't like the idea of there being delays. But the reality is that that's how it is going to work. Now, it's not much of a delay. Basically, however the buyer pays, whether it's PayPal, credit card, Apple Pay, Google Pay, the money goes to eBay and then it gets paid out to you. And Teresa will get more into the details of how that works. But you can set it up to be daily or weekly as it's available. But the reality is somebody buys an item. It's going to probably take about two days, right, Teresa, to get to your account if you transfer it. My, I have a, I have my eBay stuff going into a credit union account in California and I get it in two days. Some larger banks take three days. It just depends on what part of the country you're in and what kind of bank, like we haven't been able to figure out a rhyme or reason, but yeah. somewhere between two and five days is what eBay, I think eBay actually says three and five days. Yeah. Most of mine come in in two days. I will say I have a uh, bank of America and I use the, the same processing system with Etsy. If I make a sale, I made a sale today. It will be in my Etsy account available to withdraw tomorrow. And then I transfer and it transfers daily and then it goes into my account. So basically the sale today will be, the money will be in my account in 48 hours. That's not the case with everybody. Sometimes it's an extra day, sometimes an extra two days, but yeah. that's, that's the way it looks now. I made a sale this morning. It's a, it shows as pending until tomorrow. And then tomorrow it shows as available balance and it automatically is sent to my bank account. Now yeah. I, I do daily with that. So you don't have to do that in the same way. You'll be able to set up a schedule. Yeah. And so then one, one, one other question um, I wanted to cover before we go to Teresa, we're going to look at some screenshots so we can, for those of us who don't have managed payments yet, we can kind of see what it looks like and how some of it works. Um, but the other thing I see a lot of people asking about is bank accounts. So yeah, you do have to have a bank account. Um, I believe it needs to be a checking account. I don't think it can be a savings account. It needs it to be can a be a, you, you, only can need, you only need a routing number and, a, and an account number. eBay doesn't okay. care whether it's a checking or savings. So it can be savings or checking. It does not have to be a business account. You do not have to open a new account. Now, if you have an account now, you can use whatever account you have right now. Now, I know uh, Vicki and I each are going to open a new account for our businesses, not a business account, just a regular checking account. And the only reason we're doing that is just because for accounting methods. now that we have all these different platforms, uh, we, we want to be able to put it into a, one specific account for business instead of like my personal checking account, which is what I have right now. So that's yeah. that's not required. You can put it. It all depends account. on what your how you do your own accounting. That's entirely up to you, and that's your business. And we're not going to get into the details of that. Right. Uh, but you can use it again. It can be either a checking account or a savings account. Does it have to be a separate account? No, it does not. That's entirely up yeah. to you. So that's I know a lot of people are asking like, do we have to open a new account? Yeah. All I right. want to. Yeah. Let me cover one ask. thing because this this happens a lot because I've seen this a lot in different in different groups. People get upset. I'm not going to give Macari my credit card because they already have my banking information. You're going to run into that because eBay and Macari and other platforms need your credit card so they can charge something if they need to. So they can charge, let's say you, you need a refund and you don't have any sales for 10 days. Then they're going to charge that to your credit card. You need a backup. Yeah, you need a backup. And then, but they need your bank account so they can transfer your money out. So your credit card for money that you need to pay, banking for the, the money that needs to go back to you. It's no big, people don't realize you already have that with PayPal, but they get all wrapped around the axle around that. I just want to make that clear. Yeah. And just as far as, here's a pro tip for a banking account. Um, everybody, you can call it a business account, but do not go to the bank and set up a business account because let me tell you, I've done it. It's an hour and a half process. And that's if you need to take credit card payments and you want to take payments, uh, what do they call ACH payments and all these other things you have to, you know, give your firstborn child away. Nobody needs that for the type of seller you are. If you're watching this webinar and, um, just get a simple free checking account that doesn't penalize you for having daily or weekly payouts. That's all. Yeah. 
you had some questions? So there were a couple people that were talking about, there's a couple of misconceptions. At, when this first rolled out, you were getting dozens of deposits a day and dozens of withdrawals a day. I will say- no, you you're, weren't, you're getting one a day. Well, a lot of people were, getting, people were. It, get, getting dozens a day. When nope. they were, every time they tried to pay for a label. It was because they were buying oh, labels. Right. Paying for a label, I'm sorry, yes. Paying for a label. Yes. So let's say you sold so, 20 items and you shipped 20 items, you had to pay yes. 20 different transactions. Now, what I want to clarify is that is no longer the case. You won't have that issue anymore. You can do a daily deposit. You can do a weekly deposit. Um, you, if, if you happen to have an account where you are limited by the number of online transactions, some accounts will limit you, or and if you go over that amount, they're going to charge you. Uh, definitely look into that because that's going to determine the type of account you want to use to set up. But you don't have to worry about that anymore because you are now able to pay for labels out of your pen out of your balance. Mm -hmm. So um, Again, that's another why, thing that people have. That was something everyone was upset at. That was part of the roadmap. Like you can't yep. have this huge thing to three percent of the of the sellers and have it all work. 18 months. No, ago. it was just something. This is these are just information that's out floating out there. And a lot of times the problem will be out there, but nobody ever hears about the solution the or the fix or mm -hmm. the right. changes that make that no longer a relevant issue. Right. Right. And, um, and I was I was in some Facebook groups this weekend and they were still saying, oh, but they managed payment doesn't take PayPal. So I get it. People aren't up to date with it. I totally get it. So hopefully we'll fix that with this video. Yeah. So you want to go ahead and um, share it? I want to ask what? a couple. Uh, okay. Ask some of the questions that are coming up are easy answers that she can do. Uh, look at, can you yeah. stop touching that one? We'll click on it. All right. Okay. Uh, does eBay have a goal to deduct fees at time of sale and deposit? Are they doing that now, Teresa? Okay. That is called fee netting. And they do have a goal. It is on the roadmap. But again, you have to do it once everybody on the platform gets on the same payment thing. And so, yes. Yeah, so then the idea is that you will get your $25 sale. eBay will take their 12% fees. And then you will just get the net into your account. Yeah. That's, a fee now, net. that's, how, that's how Etsy works now. Sort of. Because the uh, Etsy takes everything out as you go eBay is going to be taking final value fees out, but you're still going to be invoiced for, for like your store, store fees, subscription. your insertion fees. Correct. So it's, so it's going to be a little bit different. Correct. And I don't, I actually don't know how they're going to do manage or not uh, promoted listing fees because promoted listing uh, fee is tied to a transaction, but I haven't actually seen asked that question or seen it. So I hope it'll be at the same time because that will at least help to not have a huge you don't get bill. a huge bill. Instead of having a seventeen hundred dollar bill a month, I may I will have like a three or four hundred dollar bill. Yeah. So but nicer. Be, but don't be disappointed when your deposits are much lower. Well because yeah. you know, there's that offset. <laughs> so yeah. people right. people just point that out. Okay. Yep. And Etsy didn't used to do that. They started doing like maybe in the last two years. And man, I was so happy when they finally did that. Um, and then one last thing you had mentioned the, the um, final value fees percentages. So I, I do know there's a couple of things people are concerned about. Yes, your fees will go up. It'll seem like your fees are going up with eBay, but that's because you no longer are going to have a PayPal fee. And so now you're going to have your final value fees plus your payment processing fees, um, and it's all going to be at eBay. But it's it's pretty close to being. It a ends wash. up being in in some categories, most carries ends up being less, like actually a little lower, almost half a percent lower total. It is a half a percent lower. So so I used to just calculate for eBay and PayPal fees, quick mental math at fifteen percent, and that was counting for three percent for PayPal and twelve percent for eBay. Well, eBay wasn't twelve percent; it was more like nine to ten percent. But 15% was my mental math. So now eBay is 13, 12.5% plus 30 cents per transaction, not per item anymore. Okay, good. So that I mean, yes. I feel like part of that might have been because people kind of you know, kind of rose up together and said, hey, that's not cool that it's, it's going that way. Because there was a short period of time where it was going to be per item. And a lot of people um, really spoke up. So I think that kind of shows that eBay does listen and they do hear people's concerns and they recognize when something doesn't really make sense and that they need to make adjustments to it. Um, now, please, people that are actually in managed payments, these questions are coming way faster than we're going to be able to get to all of them. So please be aware that, that we're not going to get to everyone. So I appreciate those of you that are in the program that are answering the questions in their reseller project. Um, 
Michelle is is um, is in that in managed payments. There are a few people in the chat that are in managed payments and uh, are answering some questions. So please, uh, That's when you very ask questions, go ahead and look at the answers. Yeah, very yeah. true, Michelle. I forgot about that. Managed payment or, or promoted listings is very weird the way they do it because they have to wait for thirty days and then they have to wait for the returns. And so, like, it gets sixty days out. So you're right. Based on that, it is not going to be part of the fee netting. It'll be part of the invoicing. Yeah. All right, so let's go ahead and, and and if you don't get your question answered now, because we're kind of in the middle of this, uh, feel free to ask again later um, when we're kind of looking at questions. But I'm going to go ahead and share the screen so that Teresa can can talk to us about what these screenshots mean, and we'll kind of go through them and hopefully um, it makes sense. Let's see. Okay. Uh, so the first one I did is a screenshot of Stellar Hub. So. No, that's is that O one? Yes, it is. Oh, you're right. I'm sorry, I missed the three tabs. They're at the bottom. Okay, so this is okay. So if you see that it's Seller Hub and you see um, where it's underlined at the top to the right of the tabs, it says payments. So yes, this is right here. Yeah, exactly. This is your payments manage payments tab. You click on that and you get this screen. And so on the left, you have your left hand side. We're going to go through all those different things. And then there's three tabs at the bottom of the page, payouts, available payout, and pending funds. We're gonna go over that. But um, mom, I'm on, I'm on, I can't talk to you, mom. <laughs> it's important. Um, so the last, you'll see here that the last payout was May 12th, and then and it tells you the number of orders you have, the number of refund funds, and the number of claims. And then the next one, available for payouts and your pending pay funds, the number of orders, refunds, and transfers. And then over here is how you got paid. You can see it goes to my credit union and I'm on a weekly payout schedule. Okay. Okay. So then, then, so that's how, that's the payout tab. So go to the next one. And you'll see the available for payout tab. Oh, this is more detail at the bottom. Yeah. Here's so, the payout. yeah so you can see that I get, I get mine weekly. So there's April 28th, May 5th, May 12th. It's like once a week you click on there. There's a payout ID. You click on that and you get a lot of detail. I love the drill down detail that's on these reports. Yeah, people are- uh, Mom, <laughs> not now, I'm doing a video. <laughs> no. You need to go talk to mom. It's okay if you need to Hang talk on to one mom. second, hang on. We can go over the screens. We'll go over the screens a little bit. Let's go well, ahead. We'll answer some of the questions in the chat. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Okay. Mom doesn't realize that she's uh, doing a video. Mom's uh, been, like I said, she's just came home from the hospital and Teresa has been taking good care of her mom. So it's nice to, uh, yeah. that she's going to go answer some questions, make sure she's okay. Yeah, for sure. So I see Allison in the chat. Allison, we, we touched on this a little bit. Um, basically what's going to be, when, once it's set up completely, they're going to be taking your final value fees out at the time that somebody purchases something. Um, but there's still going to be an invoice for like your insertion fees, like your store subscription, uh, your prob most likely um, for uh, promoted listings, stuff like that. So it's going to be a, a kind of a combination of the two. And it will take, uh, and that's not happening yet. That's going to be happening once that, once everyone is converted. That's what Teresa right. had said. Yeah. So it's not something they can do in stages where only a few people have their fees taken out. And then, uh, you know, the people that are not on managed payments don't. So it's, yeah. they, it, once the program is all rolled out eventually, which is the majority of us are going in in July, there will be a few stragglers that'll go in a month or two later mm -hmm. with a couple of issues. One other big question and concern that I've kind of seen talked about on in different um, groups, and some people are very upset about it, uh, is the question around paying final value fees on um, sales tax. And, uh, you know, we can get into that a little bit more, but yes, you the are answer paying. Is yes, you're paying them now. Yes, you will continue to pay yes. them. Now, what I want to say is, is that, uh, are you upset about that? I kind of get it. It's like, oh, we're, why are we paying final value fees on the sales tax? However, do you guys remember when everything was happening with the sales tax stuff and, and we talked about like what, it would mean to us as small sellers if we suddenly had to comply with these federal rules and regulations around collecting sales tax for different states, different, uh, you know. There's whatever. over 12,000 different jurisdictions you would have to worry about paying yeah. sales tax. 
for. So here's, here's here's the thing. Even even though you do have to pay that, and you've been paying it since last September on through PayPal, in, through PayPal, uh, it is it is a tax write off. So again, all of this all of these things are write offs. They're not you know yes they're coming out of your 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 lump sum immediately, but then you're writing them off when yeah. you do your taxes. So and the reality is that eBay is handling this for us. They're the ones that they have. I'm sure they have like a whole department that has to handle sales tax stuff. Uh, there's a lot that goes into that. And so to me, I feel like this is how we have to pay for it is we, it's going to have to be paid for one way or the other. So I'll pay for it with final value fees on that sales tax. So the other question someone's asking is, do we need to finish the, fill out the information now, or can we wait till the very last minute? Here's the thing. If you have the ability to fill it out now, go ahead and fill it out now, because what they're going to do is they're going to send you information for you to review and get familiar with before you're forced in. Yeah. So you're not going to start, you're not going to be in managed payments until July, but there's nothing wrong with you giving them the bank information and getting it done now. So your account is not somehow put on hold or frozen when they make it live. Don't yeah. forget. I mean, they're, they're trying to get millions and millions of sellers set up and properly into this program and there are going to be questions and if you want to if you run into questions would you rather run into them now before it goes live or the day that you're all of a sudden you can't accept sales uh you know that's that's how i look at it you're not going to be rolled out into it and they're going to tell you before you are it says that right in the email mm -hmm. uh so go ahead and set your stuff up now if you're able to i'm not setting mine up mine up yet only because i'm waiting till the banks <laughs> are more open because i want i want to go and get another uh checking account but that yeah. doesn't that's the only thing stopping me i can probably do it online but um yeah all right Teresa, you're back i'm back thank you uh okay let's go back to this let's go back to the screen this is the uh payout screen let me know when you want to go to the next one okay yeah so on this i just wanted to show that some of the like they've really built out this part of the um uh seller hub page and i just want to show you that the payout um you can you can search by payout ID by our username, order number, and sales record number. And like, so you can, depending on what bit of information you have, you can come in here and find it very easily. Okay, next slide. And then here is, so I, I liked this one because it gave a lift, it gave some ideas. So you have the date, you have your order, there's an order number, um, and then you have the item that you had and some prices. And I, um, you can see that there was a transfer done. So that item is was a return. And so they had to take money back, which mm -hmm. is because it's all in the same week. They just deduct it from my running total. This is why I like doing weekly better than daily. And I think that the, the, the weekly only became available in the last two, maybe three months. And doing daily payouts, it was a bookkeeping nightmare. If you can, I really want them to go to bi-weekly payouts because um, it. I'm used to it with every other platform I have. But the way this the way this works is, it, PayPal is not a bank. PayPal is a payment processing company, so they don't have to abide by the bank federal bank regulations that this that AD and these. You know, we're we're transferring money through banks. They have to deal with money laundering. There's all this other rules. One of the things is that. When I buy something and I put it in my credit card, it doesn't go to eBay. It goes to ADN. It goes to a uh, clearinghouse. And so people have complained that sometimes um, uh, payments take longer. And whether it's right or wrong, we've kind of figured out that maybe that those are American Express. So if a buyer pays with American Express card, it, send, it tends to take a little bit longer. So by daily payouts, it was hard. Like, okay, I got this payout on Friday, but it was for an item I sold on Monday. And it's like, now with a week it has time for all that stuff to catch up and i may have one or two items at the end of the week that are um in limbo and then by the next week they're paid out so you know so just keep that in mind if you decide with weekly or uh daily payouts so you can see that on the bottom i had a transfer and then a refund as well and i blocked that out because it's a very hot item that <laughs> I just I'm not ready to give that information yet. So it's it for so I don't want you to think that for transfers and refunds you don't get the detail. You do get the detail, and okay. um, it's there. So just but I like this. It's very detailed. You can print it. You can download a report if you have you know tons and tons of transactions. I'm gonna get to the, our questions that we have on the thread since we asked people to put yeah. questions. So I'd like to yeah answer some of those. Okay. Uh, do, you want, do you want to answer some now? Or yeah. Do you want to, well. Do you how many, what are yeah, the, okay. she have one more page to go? No, she's got multiple pages left. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, so, let's go. Let's keep showing. I just okay. wanted to, or, or, I don't, you know. Okay, I'll, I'll do this quickly. So the next slide. Okay. So I just wanted to show you that these are the different ways you can sort by order, refund, credit, claim, shipping, transfer, buyer username, order number, sales record number. Like you just click, click, download the drop down menus, type it in there. And, you know, if you're lucky enough to have thousands of uh, records to search through, you can easily find it. Next one. This is what did I call this one? Pending funds. Oh, so this is what you call. These are how your pending funds. See how it says processing funds here in the um, column over here. Like, mm -hmm. you, and it gives you your order number and the. So these are three orders that I had yesterday, and um, the amount. So it's like the detail is so like the the. I'm sorry, but the PayPal reports suck. This detail is light years ahead of what we what we're used to dealing with PayPal. So I just wanted to show that. Okay. This is more detail on the, so again, you can, you can do by buyer username, order number, sales record number, and then these drop down menus about the order, the refund, the credit, the processing funds that are on hold. Like you can easily, you know, sift through this and, and sort through that. Okay. So those are the three tabs on, um, on the, um, Seller hub. Now going down the left hand side, you can see, oh, oh, this is the detail of an order. So if I click in on one of those order numbers, this tells me the buyer's name, the G, their Gmail, the email address, their phone number, the date sold, the sales record number. It has my shipping uh, tracking number. I can click on that and see where it is. Um, I blocked out the addresses and so on and so forth, but that's all there. So I love that this is all right here. So that's your, um, your order detail that's at the top and then this is at the bottom of that page and so this is what i sold you can see that's an international sale international sales now i ship my own stuff on international my international sales that was one of my uh things that i wasn't happy about in the beginning uh but my international sales are back up um to i don't know that they're back up to where they were but they're definitely picking up and so you can see that this is the item I can click on the tracking. Like, I love this detail. Okay. Uh, we have a couple more. More, the kind of reports you have, you can get a transaction report, a payout report, refunds, others. Like, and then you can see that you can do all transactions from January through December. So there's my whole annual thing for last year. And you yeah, see that. I had just asked, is it limited to 90 day reports? No, you can limit, you can do the whole year, yeah. up to a whole year. So. I think they're changed. I think they're going to go to ten years. Don't quote me on that, but I know it's going to be more than two. Okay, go back to the other one because um, go back one more. Okay, so what I wanted to show you, like on the left hand side, this is what the reports looks. Now the next one that we have is tax forms. So if you click on tax forms, go to the next slide. I love this built-in security feature. I now have to log in again to get to my tax forms. Yeah. And then go to the next one. And then there's a, the payouts, um, a big tax form payout settings. So this right, right here is telling me that I have it going to the credit, my credit union and it's weekly. And, and then now, there's- This says every Tuesday. Are you able to pick the day of the week? Cause somebody asked that. Yes, I picked some, I think when I changed it was a Tuesday. So if I wanted to make it on a Monday, I would just next week change it. I would probably do a daily and go back to Monday. It's just, it just happened to be the day that I changed it. Okay. Okay. And then, um, oh, oh yeah, you got that right there. Okay. Yeah. So the same thing. And that, that's how very quickly and e how easy it is daily, weekly, say big deal. Okay. So this one is just the taxpayer settings. And if you click on that review account details, then it goes into another security screen, which I didn't screenshot. And um, you make your changes there. Okay. And that's, that's it. That's um, the uh, seller hub tabs in a nutshell. And I think, I think that they've done a very, very good um, job of presenting the, the information in an easily understandable way where we can just click through and find stuff. Tax forms are there, 1099 is there, uh, downloadable reports, anything you need. Okay, uh, so Vicki um, has pulled up on her tablet here um, the post that I did yesterday in Boss um, Facebook group so people could ask questions ahead of time. 
Um, so I know there's people still asking questions in the chat, but we're going to cover some of the questions that are that were posted yesterday to make sure that we're trying to cover everything that people are asking about. So a real quick one that has been asked many times is, is it, is it compatible with GoDaddy? I do know that as of recently, it is. They, yes. It took a while, but they're, they're now compatible with GoDaddy. Yeah, it, eBay had to build out the API and then GoDaddy, even GoDaddy, I mean, I knew that that was built out and GoDaddy was still telling their customers that it was eBay. And that's just GoDaddy needing to take the time to, to build that, whatever they need to build to push out. But yes, it, people are using it and it does work. Uh, let's see, uh, a question that wasn't answered. If we are using GSP, are we paying final value fee on the customs fees, Pitney Bowes no. portion too? No. no, I don't think you were before, so I can't nope. imagine that no. you would be now. No. Um, let's see. The bank account question, Deborah's in the chat. I do know that. And I think we've asked, we've uh, answered that a few t different ways about the best way to set up bank accounts. Uh, daily or weekly transfers, we did that. Um, Let's see, good question on this one. If we don't know the answer, we could find out. Are the fees more expensive for accepting international payments? With a Canadian PayPal account, I pay a higher rate on US payments that I accept, as well as international. Would love if that would not be an, an, an issue with managed payments. So you're paying a conversion fee to accept your, your payments, so, what she's saying. What I know for now is that managed payment is available in the US. I do not know when they are rolling it out to Canadian customers. So I know that some Canadian customers have a U.S. account. You mean Canadian and, sellers? I'm sorry, Canadian sellers have a U.S. account. So if you have a U.S. account, you're going to follow the U.S. rules. And so if I don't, I don't know about conversion rates. I don't know if there's fees like PayPal had for conversion rates. Yeah. Any next question? Um, okay. So this was a good question here that I'm not. Uh, Jean says, I started reading the fine print. There's a twenty dollar dispute fee if it is a seller's fault. Um, that's not really a question, but that was a statement, but I, I think I'm gathering that you might be referring to kind of like how PayPal has right now. It's a chargeback fee. It's the chargeback fee that they have if there's something. Yeah, let me let me find out. Um I've got I've got some I'll email somebody on the team and find out. Um and we'll exactly answer that, that question is. in the boss group when we find out yeah. the answer yeah, to yeah, that. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I, I will say in all of my, I've been on PayPal, using PayPal since day one, and I can count on one hand out of 40,000, literally yeah. 40,000 transactions, how many times that I have ever gotten a chargeback fee. Um, you know, 99.99% .99 of the time they have covered when there's been a customer issue. Has there been issues before? Yes, people complain about chargebacks on pay, PayPal. It's maybe happened to me five times that I've actually yeah. lost the money uh, out of 40,000 transactions. So so I have a question and I'm curious, um, Teresa, if you know the answer to this or if this is something that we need to find out. One of the issues with PayPal, with having PayPal as it is right now, is that somebody, let's say they open a case on eBay um, it gets settled in eBay and then everything's great. And then they go and they open a case on PayPal. And one of the problems with PayPal is PayPal has a, has a longer, what is it? Six months, 120 like, day window. It's a 120 day window for somebody to say, Hey, I didn't get this. And the problem is 90 days and the post office gets rid of your tracking number. And, um, I mean, I have had it happen to me. Does it happen a lot? No, but it has happened where somebody opened and uh, that they didn't receive something and it's like a hundred days later and you go look at the tracking number you can't and you prove, can't get any information. You can't prove delivery because there's the tracking has disappeared. Yep. You know, if eBay, how that's going to work with eBay. Yeah, no, this is, this is a huge, huge win for sellers. eBay is one company, one person. There's not going to try to, you know, uh, play, play each other against each other. So eBay, is the only person, the only company you're going to have to go to to settle any kind of disputes with shipping, with with um, chargebacks, with any of that kind of stuff. PayPal, even if they pay with PayPal, that's not your issue. That would be right. so. The issue. contract is now is our, our our agreement is now just eBay, which yep. means that those chargebacks eBay is going to handle, and you're never going to hear about if it happens. Basically, on eBay right now, it's the same rules. So if somebody disputes something or they didn't get something, I think they have 60 days on eBay. And you're fine. Yeah. yeah. Well, let yeah. me tell you a really fun thing that happened to me yesterday. So I had an international buyer who got their item and they had to pay um, an import tax. 
um, which is what they have to do. And they sent me a message asking me why I didn't market as a gift with zero value. So they wouldn't have to pay. And I said, because I, I'm not going to falsify customs documents for you. And, uh, and so they went ahead and they messaged me through, through eBay. And then they went and they opened an item not as described case on PayPal requesting a $20 refund. And in the notes, they said that they basically wanted help paying for that customs fee. Now I'm, I'm relatively confident that PayPal will do the right thing. I mean, all the information is right there, but I will say it makes me feel a lot better knowing that something like that happens um, just on eBay. It's not going to be an issue because obviously they can't make me give them $20 to pay for their uh, import fees. Right. It's pretty clear that that would be eBay be like, yeah, no, we're shutting that shit down. <laughs> uh, PayPal, on the other hand, who knows? Yeah. You know that 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 awesome vintage Adidas track jacket that I sent to some guy in Germany and uh, I held out for the full price. Uh-huh. He's now complaining he hasn't received it yet. It's been 10 days. I'm like, ah. Oh, man. COVID. COVID, people. <laughs> yeah, it's taken a while. Yeah, somebody had mentioned in the chat, has nothing to do with this particular show, but somebody had mentioned in the chat that, you know, they've got some international items that are, that are you know, from February that are still floating around out there. Listen, that's not an eBay issue. It's not a PayPal issue. That's a USPS issue right now. And it's all part of what's happening in yeah. this in the, all over the world. Um. Personally, I've been I have been, I've been fortunate uh, ensuring all of my international sales during this pandemic, just because uh, I know that there's issues with things getting lost, and Pirate Ship is really good about um, taking care of of its customers. So, okay, so let's go to uh, the chat. If you if you have a question that you think um, we really me, need to address, let me let me ask Jen for a second because she said two things. She says just be honest. She trusts eBay. I mean, trust PayPal. eBay not so much. And then she says, I don't feel like eBay has our back the way PayPal does. So Jen, let me just tell you this, that I have been working with the team on this. And I actually last year in February went to eBay headquarters and as a guest of um, Harry Tamkin and me and three other sellers and spoke to eBay employees about managed payments. And I have to tell you that though they, the resource, it's a huge project. But eBay has dedicated the resources to make it to, I mean, like, it's huge, it's complicated, it's finance, like, they can't afford to screw this up. And so I have had zero issues refunding, I haven't had anybody request, um, like what Katie said, I don't have any issues with the PayPal eBay thing. So I would just say that 18 months in, I have no idea how many transactions I've done. But give eBay, I mean, I get it. I, I'm an eBay cheerleader, people kind of discount what I say because of that but give eBay a chance on this one. Um, I feel like I said, I'll say it again. It is in 23 years, the best rolled out program eBay has ever done. Like they have crossed their T's, they've dotted their I's. It may not be everything that, that sellers want from day one, but that was never the plan. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I just, I just want you to, and if, and Jen, if you do have issues with something going on with eBay, please reach out to me. I will, I can put you in touch with somebody. I can help you figure it out. Get in the Facebook group if you have some issues because, um, you know, there's people in there that have had that can help you, uh, you know, figure things out because it is different. Somebody else asked, you know, what's the use for PayPal? Well, we all still have our PayPal because, frankly, sometimes I don't want to go figure out my credit card and I know how to put my my um, e email address in to pay for something. Mm -hmm. So there's a question here and that uh, Tommy in Seattle's asked this a few times. I, I think I know the answer, but uh, Teresa, can I have funds transferred to PayPal? I asked because I have their credit card. I used to buy product, et cetera. I only transfer personal income or money into my bank. I, I'm going to see if I'm correct in this answer is uh, you're not going to have a routing number and account number for PayPal. So the answer is going to be no. Yeah. Correct. As well, far as I know, you will not be able to transfer to PayPal because PayPal is not a bank. Yeah. And, and that's where like Vicki and I both have said that we each want to open another account. Because we do the same way. I mean, what I do is here, here's the reality is 90% of my income comes into PayPal through PayPal, uh, through eBay. And then what I do is once a week, I pay myself 
I pay my fees and what's left in my PayPal account is what I use for purchasing yeah. and for uh, for buying goods. That's how I separate my business income now because it's just me. I know what the heck I'm looking at. Mm -hmm. But now that income is going to be coming in differently, I want to be able to keep it separate. So therefore, it you know, as of right now, it's only been the occasional deposit from Etsy and Macari and Posh, which is getting to be more than occasional. So it's it's actually high time for me to have a second account. And this is just forcing me to do that to make my accounting uh, easier. Yeah, for sure. And you know, I know going back to the whole like trusting eBay thing, I saw some comments um, on the post in the boss group of people. It's a kind of common thing that you hear over and over again, that it's all about the buyer and that eBay generally sides with the buyer over the seller. And I gotta say that just has not been my experience. And I'm not saying it hasn't happened to you. I just think that overall out of the tens of thousands of transactions that I've had out of the many issues that have come up, cause they do come up with buyers. Um, you know, I found that 99% of the time eBay has sided with me. And Same. I think that really has to do with the details of what the issue is and how it's being addressed. And, um, there, here's the, here's the reality is every transaction going to be hundred percent perfect? Hell no, that's business. And, and people have to realize that that's, that's the nature of this business in general has, has a buyer gotten one over on a seller before and will they continue to? Absolutely. It's going to happen. Um, do I like that? You know, INADs are still handled mediocre at best. Uh, you know, it's way too easy for a customer to open it, to get, to force you to pay for the return shipping. Uh, you know, it's a little bit better now because you have some recourse to, to battle that. Uh, but it's still a crappy position to be in. And yes, it does happen far too frequently, but that has nothing to do with this managed payments thing. That just has to do with the nature of being an online seller. Yeah. Um, if you're an online Amazon seller, you have the A to Z uh, returns that an Amazon can, you know, an Amazon buyer can open up and you're screwed. You know, there's nobody, at least at eBay, you have somebody that can take a look at your transaction and try to help you. eBay is um, much more accessible and uh, no, PayPal, forget about it, trying to get a hold of anybody for help. It, and it has happened. You know, it has happened. I've been screwed by a buyer before. Everybody has. If you're in this business, there is a certain percentage of your sales that you need to account for. It's considered, it's called shrinkage. If you had a brick and mortar store, you would have people that would steal from you. You would have people that would uh, return things that were broken. It's the same type of biz thing. It's does it suck every time it happens? Absolutely. Yeah. Can some people absorb a hundred dollar hit more than others easily? Sure. We all, you know, I've been times where I've I've had you know negative in my PayPal account in in the course of twenty years right. doing this. It happens. It's, but that shrinkage is not indicative of a broken system. Uh, because it is 100% going to happen no matter whether you're online or brick and mortar. But the reality is, if you've ever had a brick and mortar store, you know, if you've ever worked retail, um, you know, as a teenager or as an adult, whatever, you ha I mean, you got to know that stuff gets stolen, stuff gets broken, stuff at a much higher rate than it does for us online sellers. Um, but and it sucks every time it happens. There's no question. Nobody likes to be no. uh, to lose money. But the reality is, is that again, some for some people this is merely a hobby or a side business, and for some people it's a real business. And if and if you consider it a real business, then you're going to have real business yeah. issues, and that's one of them. So speaking quickly on um, eBay accessibility, I wanted to point out. Let me share the screen again here. I wanted to point out uh, Jordan Sweet Sweetnam. He's a VP at eBay. I believe he's the general manager over uh, the Americas or something like that. Americas market, which means I think it's Canada and, and uh, the US and whatnot. He, on his Facebook page, did this public post, basically an FAQ. And I actually linked to it down below uh, because there's some, some of the co most common questions that people have about um, managed payments. And so I wanted to give you guys an opportunity if you wanted to go over and look at that, or if you wanted to ask him a question, um, he may not answer right away, but this is because he is the one personally managing this account. That is his eBay business, uh, Facebook account. And he does not have minions answering these questions for him. And he's made that clear before. So, uh, you know, give him a little time. But yeah. He will, he has been trying to get to all of the questions, but yeah. So if there's something that you feel like we haven't adequately addressed or addressed at all, um, please go ahead and check out and follow the link down below and you can ask him the question directly and hopefully you'll you'll get hear something back. But I mean I appreciate that. I don't see I don't see anything like that happening with Amazon. You don't um, have the VP of Amazon sales uh, on Facebook group on, on in answering questions while he's getting his kids cereal for breakfast. I mean Yeah. It no. does that's not happening. 
let me tell you about Amazon. Amazon loves their seller so much. There's not even an option to call and talk to a live person if you're an Amazon seller. Like that to me is ridiculous that Amazon is as huge as they are and their inventory probably comes, a third of their inventory comes from third party sellers, maybe even half, and they can't afford to give us a live person to talk to. Yeah, I'm not, I mean, we all know I'm not a fan of Amazon, but you know, we, we do what we do. It's the necessary so, evil to sell sometimes, you know? So, yeah, somebody said, somebody asked if the money's transferred to your bank account, can you do partial transfers? As far as I know, no, you can't. You have to do it. Like, it's just, it's whatever's in your account and then eBay just transfers it. What I like about this is I don't think about it anymore. Like on Tuesday morning, I get an email that says, here's your bank transfer. Here's the money you have. And I'm like, oh, wow, that was a great week. And then I go like, and it's there and my money is just there and I have things set up to automatically pay. And it's like, I don't, I am a, a, a finance and bookkeeping and accounting person. I don't think about this crap because when you run your own business, you don't have time for that. Yeah. I will say, I appreciate that I'm doing Grailed now because uh, Grailed still uses PayPal. So I'm still going to have some funds coming into my PayPal. So I do plan to continue uh, most likely to just buy my labels, a lot of my labels through pirate ship, like I already do. Um, and not really change much of that. Um, but I know some people, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be like, it's, it's just, it's going to be an adjustment. Things are going to change. It's just like, you know, for anybody who's been like using um, list perfectly, one of our beloved sponsors uh, to cross post to different platforms, you've probably over the last year or so expanded Vicki you're now on what four platforms or five, four platforms. And Six if you count Bonanza and Amazon, but I mean, they're so mediocre for me. Yeah. But, but every time you add a new platform, it's like, it's a whole new, you have to learn a whole new way of like, okay, how do I print my labels? How do I buy my labels? How do I get my money? How does this work? And it's, it takes some time and some adjusting. And that's just what you're going to have to do with this uh, managed payments with eBay. But, but with the whole cross posting, the reason I cross post is because I don't have to learn how to do that. Yeah, that's true. You go with the perfect thing, you just click it and you click the thing. So for me, I can figure out how to print the label. I can figure out how to transfer my money. But getting the stuff up on there is like, boom. I just want to get, the, I mean, I'm just amazed at how much stuff I'm selling across all platforms. Yeah, for sure. E-commerce is hot right now, you guys. You know, so Dixie Girl <laughs> says, I guess some of us sellers that have been using for PayPal for so long, it seems like it's going to be hard to change. Yeah. I completely understand that. You know, Absolutely. like I said, Teresa yeah. and I have both been on the platform for over 20 years. She's got a couple years on me. I've been on I've been on eBay for 22 They're years. They're long in the tooth. We're, we're, <laughs> we're OG sellers. So 22 years I've been on PayPal. I mean, I've been on eBay and I've been using PayPal for what, 20 of it, I think? Yeah, so PayPal came around in like 99, 2000. So, and you know, so, before that, it was it was checks, money orders, and well-concealed cash. That was, and even then, the first few years of PayPal, that's also what we got because yeah. nobody trusted PayPal and no buyers so, wanted to sign up exactly. and give money when PayPal, when PayPal first came along, we thought it was, oh my gosh, the gods had opened up and shined down on us resellers. And I remember I, the only reason I signed up for PayPal when I did is because I wanted to buy a CD of what we would call apps now for my BlackBerry in 1999. And it was a $5 CD and they were advertising, if you sign up for a PayPal account, you get $5. I'm like, okay, I'll get $5. I'll get this CD free and it'll be great. That's why I signed up for PayPal in 99. Yeah. yeah so I, you know, we all signed up thinking it was going to be great. And then the customers hated it. And they bitched and bitched and bitched. Here's the thing. No customers are going to complain about this because this is how they're shopping everywhere else in the world. Yeah. They're yes. already using their Apple Pay, Google Pay, credit cards to buy on Walmart, to buy on Amazon, to buy everywhere else. It is only eBay that has been stuck in the, you know, and 20 yes. years ago. And it's because eBay and PayPal, when they split, you have, and I don't know the details and some of this, I probably, it might just be folklore, but you know, if you're thinking that eBay is the second largest e-commerce platform on the internet and pay your pay, all those payments are going through PayPal when they pay, sell out PayPal, you have to have some kind of contractual agreement with PayPal or PayPal is going to die the next day. So they had to keep them on board. I'm guessing it's five years because it's, because we're all going to manage payment in July and they sold in July of 15. So, you know, there's all this stuff. So eBay knew this was coming. They just, it's not that they're slow and it takes a long time. It's contractual obligations. Yeah. And so one of the questions I just saw in there, I don't remember who was, did my sales go up? So in Q4 of 
18. Um, yes, my sales without PayPal, because I had no PayPal and everybody was concerned that their sales would tank because of PayPal. And um, agreeably so that this was right after the picture glitch. And so people were really concerned. I was not concerned. I understand that pictures works over here and managed payments works over here. And so I wasn't concerned, but I appreciated people's concern about the glitch. My sales increased that Q4 60% over the previous year without PayPal. Now, let me tell you, I did, I was noting that, um, and I call them new sellers if they had feedback of under 10, because what I understand from my experience and what Katie was saying just a second ago is when people go search, Google search something and go to eBay and they put it in their cart and they go to checkout and they have to sign up for PayPal, all of us in this group will watching this are like, yeah, it's no big deal. We already have an account. But the younger generation, new people just trying out, they're like, oh, I don't want to sign up for another thing that I have to remember. Oh. And then they abandon their cart. But with managed payment, it's like, oh, I can check out. Let me just put in my credit card like I do on every other platform I shop on and buy this stuff. And it'll show up on my porch in three to five days and life is good again. So yes, your sales will increase. I want you, if, when you sign up for managed payment, I want you to pay close attention to the number of new buyers. I think my three- Zero feedbacks, like look for a lot of those zero feedback buyers. Zero yeah. feedback, and it depends on when you look yes, at it. Yeah, because I do auto feedback, so sometimes I don't, I see them when they have one, or I'll go and I'll look, they'll have three, and I'm like, oh, they got three feedbacks in one day. Like, I could have been their first sale on eBay. So yeah. that's why you do the under 10, anything under 10 feedback, I was calling a new buyer. And so, yeah, you'll see those go up and we want more buyers on the platform. We want new people, new blood for sure. But listen, we're let's, let's, we're going to wrap this up. But I do want to say, uh, you know, while eBay for us is still our number one platform, it's where we make the most, the, the, the bulk of our um, money each month. I will say if you're, real mad about this and you're like how dare you ebay i'm going to another platform well let me tell you you should probably use list perfectly our beloved sponsor uh because you know i i do etsy and i do um grail now etsy adds another roughly three thousand dollars in revenue a month for me um i use list perfectly uh they're both cross posting uh, to add grailed and now I'm making it so far like another $1,500 a month. Um, so I can stick it to the man eBay. <laughs> Just kidding. But anyway, Just uh, kidding. <laughs> but seriously, it's, it, it has made a huge difference for me personally. And I know for, and if, oh, for me, for sure. And if this is going to, since I, I've been using uh list perfectly even longer than Katie, and I'm so glad that she's finally on board as well. But if you do like list perfectly, and if you are looking to expand to other platforms, and maybe this is the kick in the ass that you needed to get some stuff on some other platforms, uh, you know, there is a link down below. If you use the, uh, the code that we have in that link, you will get 30% off yeah. your first month. Um, if you look down below, um, there's a link to get you to list perfectly. Um, and it's changed now. We don't really have a referral link, but what we have is a code. It's a coupon code, basically, so that when you sign up, when you're if you're a new user and you sign up, you'll get thirty percent off. Is that what it is? Thirty percent of the first month. Yeah, thirty percent off the first month. Yeah. So I'm just let me let me give you a pro tip on that thirty percent off. Okay. If you're going to sign up for this perfectly, do the pro plan for the first month because that thirty percent will make it about fifty dollars, which will make it the business plan right uh, price. But for a month you get more information transferred, you get bulk cross posting, you get all this extra stuff. And then after that month is over, if you, you can decide, yeah, if you, you can, can, downgrade, downgrade. can downgrade or upgrade anytime, but I, I encourage people to do that uh, pro plan with a 30% to get the more most bang for your buck for lack of word. And then you have that experience without having to pay for it. And right. then um, I, more and more people are either on the business or the pro plan. And this, the pro plan just transfers way more information over. Here's what's going to happen. Okay. You're going to be real mad at eBay for telling you what to do and take it away. Your freedom. And so you're going to sign away up. Constitutional rights. You're going to sign up for, for list perfectly. And you're going to, you're going to rage sign up for other platforms and you're going to rage bulk cross post because you're like, take that eBay. I'm taking my business elsewhere. And then what you're going to find out is like, oh, I'm making money on eBay and I'm making money on Etsy and I'm making money on Grail and making money on Pop. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll stop complaining now. And, and then you'll forget that you were mad at eBay because they'll, they'll just be another platform that's making you money. So.
That's my it's advice true. anyway. It's true. Exactly what's going to happen. All right. Thank you, Teresa. Uh, I thank you. I appreciate it. Everybody's concern. It's your money. It's your. I mean, because I remember, you know, Katie was like, "No, I can't do that." And and, and I remember one of your big things was the picture glitch. And yeah, that was a black eye for eBay and a perfectly legitimate reason for not jumping on board. Um, lack of international sales was a good reason for not jumping on board. Uh, you know, from the get go. So I love that eBay. And if e and if eBay looked at your account and thought that you know you do way too much international shipping, you're not a good fit for this. They didn't sign you up. Like eBay has your back. It was, it was definitely a partnership. So, um, yeah, they didn't, they didn't, I, I did not receive an offer until this time when everybody yeah. did. So they clearly yeah. saw that my sales were too high internationally. So they didn't even send yeah. me the early offers. I could have gotten out of it because it wasn't mandatory then. And I could have called and said, I'm yeah. not ready yet for this reason. But this time everybody was, yeah. everybody yeah. did. And, and everybody did. Yeah. So I just, I just, if you have questions or concerns, post them in the boss group on that thread. Reach out to me. I'm definitely a huge fan of the program. I spend sometimes I'll just go into rabbit hole trying to correct misinformation that's out there. It's not doom and gloom that the people that are not using it want to keep talking about how horrible it is. It's not horrible. Yeah, I'm actually excited to see the increase in sales. I, you know, I, I was not happy about it at first, again, because of this, the reasons we're talking about, the international yep. reasons. But now that the majority of that has been worked out or will be by the time we're here in July, and, and I'm excited to see what it's going to do for me for third and fourth quarter. Um, you know, I, I've been I've been going up every every year and I int intend to increase. So I'm hoping this will throw me into a, a good uh, increase in sales. Yep. All right, guys, uh, we're going to wrap this up. Thank you again, Teresa, the bossiest of all the bosses. Uh, thank you so much for coming on the Shut show. Up, you're not the boss of me. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope everybody uh, feels like their questions were answered, um, or at least they have a little bit of a better understanding, and maybe they feel a little bit better about the prospect of switching over to managed payments here in the future. Um, but thank you guys for coming and joining us, and we will see you on Sunday when we will have the Sunday live hall show. Um, so get uh, Kate will have a hall anyway. I don't know. Get back to work, guys. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.